Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another fantastic Cook Along Live. My name is Robert. I'm your host. And let me know you can hear me okay and all is well. Uh, as you can see beforehand, I was having a little bit of a conversation with a colleague of mine out in Nashville, Tennessee, Nate Bailey, excellent real, real estate agent, uh, works for Keller Williams as well. So if you guys have any uh, real estate needs out in the Nashville area, give him a call. All right, let's go ahead and we'll do this kind of a thing. And I don't have a chat on here, so let me turn it on. There we go. All right, everybody. So today we're going to be making pork diablo. This is a recipe that I saw on foodwishes.com. Oh, I don't know, probably 10 or long 10, 10 years or longer ago. Um, this is a really, really easy to make dish that you can make look super interesting and super fantastic and make it look like you put a lot of work into it. But it's kind of one of those sleeper dishes where it really doesn't take that much to make doesn't take that much effort. Um, a little bit of time, but shouldn't be this should not be one of our longer episodes. I'll put it to you that way. Um, step one, we're going to get our oven on since we forgot last time and had to kind of wait on it. So we're going to get our oven set to 375. And once that's going, we're going to start prepping our pork. So the first thing we want to do, you might notice over on this side, we've got this nice little, um, we call it silver skin. It's basically a really tough tendon membrane kind of thing that holds the uh, tenderloin to the rest of the animal. And they cut it here, but it's still kind of layered on the meat. So what we want to do is take a paring knife, and I'm using a paring knife because you can get a little bit more of a close cut, not take off half of the tenderloin on this side. And we basically just want to kind of cut underneath the one side, hold it up, and just barely kind of take this off. Now, if you peel it back and take a look at it on the underside, and I'm not sure if this is going to come through on the camera, but you'll notice that it almost is kind of silvery, and that's why they call it silver skin. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get a little bit more of it off. Now I'm just, I'm just peeling it back to kind of show you what it looks like, but it's very much not fat. Like, if you, if you know what fat looks like, it's kind of this clumpy white substance. This doesn't look or feel anything like it. This is literally uh, like a connective tissue. And if you kind of peel some of the meat back there, not sure if you guys can see it on the camera, but it's almost silvery and it's very tough, uh, not super appetizing if you, uh, if you take a bite out of it and not super nice to cut through. So if you're actually you know, getting served a piece of pork and there's a really, really tough bit, uh, sometimes it might just be that the chef didn't get all the silver skin off. Now we're going to kind of get underneath here and cut as much of this off as we can. You shouldn't be taking off much of the meat. You should really be able to just kind of take off this little bit of tendon without taking too much meat with it. And there should only be one spot with this on it. The rest of your, the rest of your tenderloin should just have fat on it. There shouldn't be any, any other spots with silver skin. Usually it's just on one side, and it does kind of go under the muscle. You really just have to get the majority of it off. Uh, the rest of it gets uh, thinner over on this side and isn't as much of a hassle. And get just kind of under this flap just a little bit more. Go ahead and trim the rest of this off. And this is fat, and the rest of that looks good. Cool. So we're all good on silver skin. I'm gonna set this on the top here. And now we're gonna go ahead and season our pork. So grab salt, black pepper, and make sure you get a pretty good covering on your meat. And you'll notice that I am using two cutting boards. Uh, one is specifically for the meat, and then the other one is for everything else. And I have the smaller one for the meat. It's just easier to kind of move around and clean. But any meat that I'm going to be prepping, I'll just do it on this cutting board. And then everything else I can do on the larger cutting board. Now I'm going to go ahead and roll my tenderloin around on the cutting board to kind of pick up all of the salt that kind of bounced off. And I've got a cat who's coming in to see what's going on. Hi, what's up? OK, that's awesome. And be pretty generous with your black pepper. You want to get a good amount on here. This is pork diablo, so you want to be you want it to be a little bit spicy. And the sauce does definitely help with that, but it doesn't help to 
started on the right path with a little bit of black pepper. There we are. Again, rolling it around and kind of pressing it into all of the uh, seasoning just to make sure that I pick up as much as possible. That's it. Our pork is ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get our uh, cast iron skillet over here. You can be using stainless steel. I would recommend against using nonstick, although you can if that's all you have. Um, what you want is, as this browns, you want it to be creating kind of a fond on the bottom of the pan. Those brown bits that kind of get stuck to the bottom. We're going to be using those to create our pan sauce at the end, the Diablo sauce. So if you have a non, if you have a non nonstick pan, uh, I recommend using that for this. And we're just going to set it to medium high heat, nothing too crazy. And we're just going to start preheating it. What do you want tonight? No, there's nothing here for you. Go away. My cat is rubbing up against my legs. Anyway, we're going to let this heat up. While we're waiting for that to heat up, um, I don't know. What questions do y'all have for me? This is Q&A time. Let's talk. How's it going, guys? Have a good week. Anybody drinking anything interesting tonight? I really don't have anything fun. Um, I do have a couple of uh, Modellos, some Negra Modelo, so nothing interesting on the drinking menu tonight, but um, let's see. What else can I do? That's basically it. Just waiting for this to heat up. Luckily, it's uh, induction. Shouldn't take too long. Go ahead and get our oil in the pan. You don't need too much oil, but you do want enough so that the pork doesn't stick, so just kind of coat the bottom. And just make sure that that oil gets warmed up nicely. And this part is gonna be super easy. We're basically just gonna put the pork in here, let it brown on one side. Once that side browns, we're gonna flip it and toss this whole thing in the oven for about 20 minutes. Hmm. I don't know why, but my cat is going a little nuts today. Yeah, you're crazy. You're crazy. We're also gonna be making some bacon um, Brussels sprouts today. So you can use oil if you don't have bacon or don't wanna use bacon. Totally up to you. Regular olive oil will work just fine. Uh, maybe a little bit of butter, just to kind of give it that nice uh, nutty kind of toasty flavor. This is starting to feel pretty warm. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to put the good side down, and there's a good side and a bad side to every meat. One is going to kind of look janky and not like something you're going to want to present to a guest, and then the other side is going to look a lot smoother and just kind of like have a nicer presentation to it. Always put the presentation side down first because then when you flip it, it's going to be the side that is ready to go. Uh, it's also going to be, generally speaking, the side that's going to brown a little bit better and just look more appetizing once you have it out on a serving tray. So we're going to get, go ahead and get our pork in. You do not want your pan up too hot. You do want it to be like medium high, but you don't want it to be like ripping hot. Um, you'll actually end up burning the pork, burning the outside of the pork before it has a chance to really kind of develop that fond. So not, not the best way to go about doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the silver skin. I'm going to give all of this... Actually, I'm just going to dust off the seasoning into the bin. Good enough for government work. We're going to have two rashers of bacon, two slices of bacon, and we're just going to put them right on top of each other like this. This is kind of getting ready for our Brussels sprouts section. Meat on meat, we're going to be cooking them both, so the fact that they're both touching a meat cutting board makes no difference. Give me two seconds while I rinse my hands off, and then we'll get cutting with the bacon. So next week, I'm actually thinking about doing a tortellini 
homemade tortellini will make the pasta dough from scratch and everything. Um, I have done homemade pasta on this channel. It's one of the first videos that I did. We made our pasta dough from scratch. And um, I'm going to recommend you guys go ahead and do that if you're going to, if you want to join along with me next week for the tortellini. Make your pasta dough ahead of time, maybe the night before. And um, then we can make the tortellini the day of. And all I'm doing here is just making sure that I'm getting nice, even coverage with the oil. It tends to kind of pool on the one side and the back, so I'm just kind of making sure that we get a nice, nice, even spread. Thanks, Matthew. By all means, like, subscribe, share, bring people my way. I would be happy to have more, uh, more viewers, but I just do this for fun, so either way. Um, keep an eye on your meat. Mine is starting to get brown. I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer here. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this into, I don't know, maybe quarter inch slices. The size doesn't make too much of a difference. It's going to be up to you and what size you want your bacon to be. It is going to shrink in the pan when we cook it. So don't make it too thin. And you don't want giant pieces of bacon in there. So I would say maybe between a quarter inch and a half inch would be ideal. Try and make them all about the same size. There we go. That looks awesome. So let's go ahead and flip our pork around. We've got some nice brown coloring on there, which is great. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer this to the oven. There we go. Oven's at 290, so not very much longer, and that will be up to temperature, and then I'll start my timer. And we will get started on our Brussels sprouts. So we got our bacon all cut up. What I am going to do is take the time to kind of separate all these pieces into individual bacons. Individual bacons. Individual lardens or whatever of bacon. And the reason is when you put these all into the pan, you don't want them clumped up together. You want them to be distinct and kind of separate. And actually, what, speaking of the pan, we can actually just start putting these in the pan. We're going to start the pan off with no heat with this bacon. What we want to do, we really want to render out the fat. So we're going to start it off slow and low and let that fat render. If you have all of these little bacon pieces on top of each other, the bottom ones are going to render just fine. The top ones won't. And before you know it, you're going to have burned bacon on the bottom, still kind of raw bacon on the top. And Nobody likes, nobody likes raw bacon. Even if you like your bacon a little bit more, a little bit less crispy, raw bacon, not ideal. I'm a super crispy fan, though. When I make bacon, I like it to be almost dust. But uh, I'm, I'm a little bit weird in that regard. It's okay if it's a little bit softer. I'll still eat it. But man, nothing beats crispy, crispy bacon. So go ahead and just kind of make this one layer in the pan. And if you have a little bit extra bacon, that's fine. Um, leave it on the cutting board, on the meat cutting board. Or if you have like a little bowl, maybe transfer it. And then um, you can add it later once all of this is kind of shrunk down a bit and there's more room in the pan. But really work hard to not overcrowd the pan. Uh, not overcrowd, I mean don't layer them on top of each other if you can help it. And I don't have any heat on yet. This is just a cold pan. I'm just layering the bacon into the pan. We're going to do our Brussels sprouts a little bit differently this time than the way that we've done them in the past. Before I have trimmed the Brussels sprouts up, I have, we've done a little bit of a, a par boil, getting them just kind of really really quickly boiled for a couple of minutes just to kind of start the cooking and then we cut them in half and uh, drain them really well and then put them into the pan to cook. Today we're actually going to be cooking them straight in the pan so from dry 
We're going to throw them in the pan. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of water and then cover them to kind of steam the Brussels sprouts once we've got them mostly seared off. Uh, it's another excellent way to cook Brussels sprouts. Works for a lot of different vegetables, especially ones that are smaller in size. Wouldn't work so much for, you know, like really, really robust vegetables. Um, let's go ahead and work on our shallot next. And basically what we're going to do is if you have a shallot like this where it's two bulbs, we're just going to kind of separate the bulbs. First, I'm going to chop off the root. And then I'm going to chop off the top. And then cut this bad boy in half. And I want to cut it in half. I'm actually going to go across the middle of it, not on the flat side. And what cutting it in half does is it lets me kind of peel the skin off or the paper off a lot easier. You have two halves. Plus with the shallots, what I want is nice long shards of shallot. We're not dicing these down. We're going to leave them nice and long. And cutting them in half makes it a lot easier to kind of get this, uh, this peel off. There we go. And we'll do the same with the smaller one. And these are all parts of the Brussels sprouts. We're just kind of getting everything set up the way that we want it to be before we start cooking. Peel up from the bottom here. See if we can get this skin off. There we go. Didn't quite get all of it off on this one. And last one. Perfect. So for these guys, again, we just want nice long shards. If you want, you can cut these into smaller bits like so. Just cut through a couple of times. And then when you cut lengthwise, you don't have to worry so much. They're already kind of cut in half. This one here is already nice and thin, so I'm just going to go ahead and chop through. You don't necessarily want these to be too small. But, you know, a nice eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch is pretty good. There we go. And last one. We're going to be doing the same thing with a head of garlic. And this is basically getting everything in place before we start cooking. That way we're not trying to scramble and having things burning in here while we're working on things over here. We can just focus on doing the cooking. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Give these nice love tap there again this kind of lets you peel the skin off nice and easy all right hey siri start a timer for 20 minutes hey siri start a timer for 20 minutes there we go, robot slave. Thank you. All right, so we'll keep going with the garlic here. And this I actually want to dice. So I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to cut it lengthwise like so. Just be careful with your fingers. As long as you kind of claw your fingers over like so and keep your uh, knife up against your knuckle, the flat part of your hand, it's very, very difficult to cut yourself. However, you should always still be careful when you're chopping things up nice and fine like so. There we go, and I'm just going to cut everything into a nice little matchstick first, and then I'll dice everything all at once. And the dice doesn't have to be super fine. If I wanted super fine, I'd go grab my microplane and just grate it into the pan. But uh, we're all good with this. Just kind of cut this way, choppity chop. All 
All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the pan going. Put the garlic and the shallots close together, but don't mix them because you're going to put them in at two different times. The garlic cooks a lot faster than the shallot does, so we're going to let the shallot kind of sweat off a bit once we get the uh, bacon rendered down a little bit. And then we're going to get the garlic in just before we put the Brussels sprouts in. So we're going to go ahead and put this on low to medium heat. And we're going to get that bacon started. While we're waiting on the bacon, I'm going to go and rinse this off real quick, and we're going to start with the Brussels sprouts. Now, as far as Brussels sprouts go, I tend to basically plan around five sprouts per person. Five to six sprouts per person, depending on how, how big the sprouts are, of course. Now, if they are giant sprouts, I'll, I'll usually go you know a little bit, little bit less, and if they're not so big, I'll go a couple more. And the reason that I do that is, starting with five sprouts, and cutting them in half, you're going to end up with 10, essentially 10 pieces of food on the plate. But if you have something like this, and we start kind of cleaning it up, you're going to end up with a pretty nice large sprout. And I love Brussels sprouts, especially when they're cooked the right way and not soggy and gross. That's a pretty big sprout. If we cut it in half like that, that's about a fifth of a portion or a sixth of, sixth of a portion. Now, if you can imagine like a nice little pile of Brussels sprouts on a plate, it's a pretty good amount of Brussels sprouts. So if I'm going to be making dinner for like three or four people and I start planning on, you know, maybe five Brussels sprouts a person, four people, 20 Brussels sprouts, super easy. Or if you wanted to do six, it would be 24 Brussels sprouts. So totally up to you. And then we're just going to kind of trim off the outer leaves. I like to cut up about a quarter of an inch. Basically take off uh, all of the outer leaves that are kind of dirty or damaged or kind of softening. And just get to the core. So I like to pick my sprouts. If I go to the store, I like to actually go to the little bin that's got Brussels sprouts in it and choose from there. And I'll choose the ones that seem a little bit larger. And then the reason I cut them in half is because then you can get that nice golden crust on one side. It's a lot easier to cook a flat surface than it is to cook a curved surface. Especially if you're trying to put some nice caramelization on it. Also, and I don't know how true this is because I've never actually found one, um, I heard an old story that the reason that some people cut them in half is because there are beetles or bugs that'll bore themselves into the center and this just makes sure that you're not getting a sprout that has something in it. Um, I don't know how much I believe that only because it's never happened to me. Uh, it might be a very valid reason to cut them in half. However, it's also a very valid reason because I like having a nice golden brown side uh, that's crispy on one side and so that's the reason that I cut mine in half. And there we go. So I've got six sprouts tonight for me. And so that's going to give me 12 pieces of sprout. And if you take the 12 sprouts, 12 pieces, 12 halves, I guess, some of the uh, shallot, some of the garlic, and then all of the bacon, it's going to be a pretty good portion for one person. All right, bacon is starting to render down nicely. I'm going to grab a little spatula, give it a little bit of a stir. And you'll notice that it's starting to coat the bottom of the pan with oil, and that's exactly what you want. That's the fat rendering out of the bacon. The bacon is not starting to color yet. Now, a mistake that I've made in the past, um, even recently, is having the pan too hot and throwing the bacon in and getting the bacon super nice and, 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 and cooked, like really nice and, and crispy the way that I like it. And then by the time I put everything else in, the bacon is burned. And so this way, we're just making sure that we get all the fat out first, and we can fry everything else up in the bacon fat. We can do our Brussels sprouts, and since we're going at a little bit of a lower heat, uh, it's a little bit gentler, you end up with the, an actual better end result. And um, that's why we're doing it a little bit different today. It does take a little bit more time. And if you're cooking along, 
Not a bad thing. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit on this bacon. And we should finish with the Brussels sprouts right around the same time that the uh, pork tenderloin is done baking in the oven. And then all we're making is the sauce at the end. Next week, we're going to be doing something a little bit more gourmet, a little bit more fancy, a little bit more actual fancy with our tortellini. Um, and this is also a dish that I've made before. It's one from Gordon Ramsay. I, I love the food that he makes. Uh, he's a major reason that I got into cooking. Um, it's a tortellini. It's a tortellini of ratatouille. So we're basically going to take our bell peppers, our eggplant, um, onions, put it inside the tortellini with a little bit of olive tapenade. And then we make a gazpacho uh, sauce to go over it. It's absolutely delicious, super, super stunning when you're presenting it. Um, I'm probably going to use some of my older photos of when I've made it before. Um, you can serve it with a green salad right in the middle of the plate and then have like the tortellini dotted on the outside with the, with the sauce. Oh, it's to die for. Um, might take a little bit longer, so it might be a little bit of a longer cook along live, but it is so good. Then I've got to start thinking about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving cook along. What do you guys think? Should I do like a dish a day leading up to Thanksgiving? Should I do like an all day Thanksgiving live stream the Sunday before Thanksgiving? Um, cooking all the little bits and pieces so that you guys can turn it on on Thanksgiving day and watch with it, you know, cook along with it. Um, what do you guys think would be a great idea? Because I'm, I'm trying to think of what I want to do. Um, I don't want to do like an all day thing if that's going to bore the hell out of everybody. But if it would be useful or fun or just kind of something to put on in the background, I would love to kind of do something that would be, you know, valuable to all y'all. So what do you guys think about that idea? Kim, you're welcome to come and join me. I got plenty of food. Um, I will have enough for two. And uh, if you can make it here from across the country uh, in an hour, uh, actually, at this point, probably another uh, 25 minutes. So hopefully you've invented teleportation. <laughs> and I'll see when you get here. So we'll see that we're, we can notice that the bacon is starting to color, which is great. We're going to keep it moving. We don't want to burn it. And you'll also notice that there's more and more fat in the actual pan. And that piece tried to escape. We'll put it back in the pot, pot pan. And all of this lovely oil is going to be what's cooking our shallots and our garlic. We may have to add a little bit more at the end because these will absorb uh, quite a bit of it for the uh, Brussels sprouts. And we pretty much want to get our bacon most of the way cooked. Not all the way, but like 85 to 90 percent of the way there. Because we're going to cook all of the shallots and the, and the garlic in here with the bacon. Etienne, um, yeah, she is. So we're going to see if she's going to be able to make it for Thanksgiving here, which would be kind of fun, but it'll all depend. So go ahead and put our shallots in now. You can notice that these are very well cooked, nice and crispy. Go ahead and put our shallots in. We're not changing the heat. We're going to keep it on low. Onions are also something that if you cook too high, they'll actually burn before they caramelize. Not something that we want. We want these to be nice and sweated down and deliciously caramelized. Dad and Cindy should be here. So if Dad and, Dad and my stepmom are in, in the area, we'll, uh, we'll have them over for Thanksgiving. And honestly, I don't know that there's any plans, so I might just invite my entire family over to my place, do a day-long cook-along live, and see what kind of hijinks we can get into. I don't think I have enough room here, to be honest with you, but uh, I think that might be a little bit of fun if we don't have enough room. Definitely get some uh, clashing personalities going. So, 
Bacon and shallots should be smelling amazing at the moment. I'm going to turn this up a little bit more because you really want to hear that sizzle now. But we're not turning it up to super high. We still want this to be kind of like a medium high to medium heat. What are some of your Thanksgiving favorites? Mashed potatoes are one of mine. Absolutely love mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes and gravy, uh, of course, a turkey, um, definitely a standby. What else do you guys like to eat at Thanksgiving? Those are kind of my go-tos, and then everything else that's there is an extra. <laughs> I love it all. Oh, yeah, no multi-household meetings allowed, for sure. I can understand that. Well, everybody in my family has been staying home and totally isolated, so I don't think there's much risk if we did something together. All right, so now my onions are starting to brown, so I'm actually going to turn this down a bit because I want them to caramelize just a bit more before they really start browning off. So you'll notice that we're constantly just kind of correcting. I want these to be, I want these to be sizzling and cooking, but I don't want them to be... Um, going too hard. I want everything to be nice and gentle. So we'll adjust based on what we want. Make sure that we get all of these guys separated into their individual bits. And then get them nice and flat in the pan. Ooh, pumpkin cheesecake. Yeah, I might do that. That would be an excellent dessert with a little bit of fresh whipped cream. Ooh, I'm getting excited. I love the holidays. It's one of my favorite seasons because of all the food. All the food, all the stuff I get to do for other people, it's just like, those are my holidays. All right. Shallots are looking awesome. Bacon is looking very nice. Give this maybe another minute or two. Then we'll add our garlic for maybe a minute or two, and then we'll add our Brussels sprouts and get those guys nice and cooked. While I'm doing that, give me two seconds. I'm just going to grab a little... Thing of water so that we can steam these bad boys once we're ready to. Cool, cool. And someone just messaged me. I'll have to go check that message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape everything kind of off to the side, just get it out of the way. And we're going to toss our garlic right into the middle. Just swoop and in. Should start hearing it sizzle, which is what you want. Now the onions sucked up a lot of the um, oil from the bacon, the bacon fat, the bacon grease. So I'm going to see how well I can cook this. Yep, yeah, it looks like we got enough oil, so we're good. I'm going to slowly kind of incorporate it after it has, an, a, 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 I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to just kind of start its cooking on its own. And then we'll kind of mix it in with everything else. We're going to give this about two minutes. Again, we don't really want to burn the garlic. You don't want it to get black. If it gets, if it gets browned, great. You're not, you know, get a nice little toast on it. but we're doing our best not to burn anything. Oh my goodness, that smells good. Garlic and onion, man. Is there anything that smells better? Oof. Mm. No salt. The bacon has enough salt in it right now, so we're not adding any to this. We will to our Brussels sprouts when we put them in the pan, um, but for this, this is gonna be perfectly seasoned with the bacon. Unless you get bacon that has no salt, like no nitrates, nitrides, nitrides, nit whatever, no salt on it, then maybe add a little bit of salt, but for now, this is good. 
All right, garlic is starting to kind of brown. We're gonna just kind of scrape everything around. We got a really nice bacony onion goodness going on here. All right. So now what I'm going to do is actually pull this out. I'm just going to scoop it off onto a plate. If you have a bowl, that's great. We're going to reintroduce this once we get our Brussels sprouts cooked. But for now, we want to get it out of the pan. Leave the pan on medium, medium high. And don't worry if you have bits stuck to the bottom. That's exactly what you want. If you're using a nonstick pan, don't worry when we reintroduce this. The oil that's um, kind of been infusing with the bacon and everything will, will carry the flavor into the Brussels sprouts. But if you have a uh, little browned on bits stuck to the bottom of your pan, you're going to get a little bit of a head start. Set those over to the side. I'm actually going to turn the heat up on this a little bit. We're going to go up to high heat. I'm gonna back it off just a bit. You want it to like medium high to high. You don't want it super ripping hot again, but you do want it hot. And we're gonna add a little bit more olive oil, not much. Just like, I don't know, a teaspoon. Less than a tablespoon. You wanna give it a second to kind of warm up with everything. And me using cast iron, my pan is starting to get hot, my handle. So I'm probably going to start using my towel to grab it, just so you know. Uh, keep an eye on that. If you're using a pan where the handle gets hot, please don't burn yourself. All right, good to go. We're going to go straight in with our Brussels sprouts. We're going to go one at a time like we normally do. And we're going to put them flat side down. So flat side, down. And we're going to make sure that we put it into some of this oil. And then move the first one up to 12 o'clock. And we're just going to go around clockwise. You should hear some sizzling. And that's the water inside steaming off and boiling away. And the reason that we're putting it through the oil first is to make sure that we get the entire side coated. And what you'll notice is as you're kind of running this through the oil and running it through any of the burn bits, those burn bits are actually going to come off and kind of stick to the Brussels sprouts. Got another message, I'll go check that. And the reason we're putting them in clockwise and, and, and basically kind of tracking where we're putting our sprout, we know that this one here, when it gets cooked, the rest of them are gonna be cooked in a very short order, like right after, right after it. If you throw a bunch of sprouts in all over the place, one might be super well done, one might be super not done, and you might flip over the first one, or the last one, I guess, that went into the pan. So you're not going to have as good of a uh, control over which sprout. And I'm backing the heat off again, just down to medium high. And let me check my badings. Nate, thank you so much for that recipe. I'm going to give it a shot, and if it, uh, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. It might be here on Cook Along Live. Hey Siri, stop the timer. All right, our pork looks done. I'm gonna leave it in there while we finish the sprouts and then we'll pull that bad boy out. Now for the sprouts, I'm gonna use a spoon and my finger. Put my finger on the very top of this and kind of flip it. And that looks pretty darn awesome to me. So now if I go around, they should all mostly be cooked about the same. And with me, I'm using an induction burner and it has a magnet that is literally a circle. So mine, sometimes if they're not in that circle, won't cook as quickly as others. So don't judge me, please. If I were using a flame, if I had a flame in this uh, island, it would be a little bit better. Or if I had a better induction cooktop. But for the most part, I mean, these are pretty well browned. And we're just gonna flip them around. like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drizzle just a little bit of olive oil on these guys. Right on the sprouts. Don't worry about um, 
getting any in the pan. You just want to get some on the sprouts. And the reason you want it on the sprouts is because we're now going to sprinkle some salt. Do it from a height so that you can get nice, even, good coverage. And this is going to be the seasoning on the actual Brussels sprouts. There we go. We're going to let those sear on their backs for just a couple of seconds. And we're going to grab a lid. And the lid that we want, we want to make sure that it covers the pan. It doesn't have to be a tight seal. It just needs to be a cover. We're going to give these another, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds. All right, cool. Water in, and we're going to cover them right away. And we're literally just going to steam them for a minute or two, and they will be done. Brussels sprouts will be ready to go. At this point, we can turn it up to high heat, really kind of get that water boiling, that water steaming. And the Brussels sprouts aren't going to brown anymore. Um, they might when we flip it over once all the water's burned away. But in this case, while we're steaming them on high heat, the water is actually creating a buffer between the Brussels sprouts and the pan. So there's not going to be any burned Brussels sprouts or anything like that. Any of the caramelization, any of the color would have already been introduced when we had them flipped over on the back uh, for the amount of time that we had them there. Quite a bit of steam over here behind the camera. Annika, it's really just a really nice way to kind of track if you if you, if you start at 12 o'clock and you start like putting them around you know that the one up at the top is going to be the one that cooks first so when you flip it over if it's not cooked you just leave the rest of them alone and flip it back over until it's cooked when you flip it over and you see that you got the nice brown uh, crust on the bottom of the sprout you know that all the rest of them are done or very close to being done and then you can flip them all around at the same time now you could do a square if you wanted to, or just do rows. If you just remember, like for me, clockwise just works the best. Um, but any order where you're going to remember which one the first one you put in the pan or the pot was is what you want to use. Also, like I said, in this pan in particular, it's got a circular magnet on the bottom. So I know that if I go in a circle, they're all going to be kind of over the magnet, which is heating the pan. And they should get all cooked at about the same rate. All right. That lid is super hot. Brussels sprouts are done. We're going to flip them back over to their flat side. And you'll notice that we're not getting any burned backs, but they are nice brown backs, which is awesome. Nice bright green. No dull, no dull olive drab or anything like that. And we're not forgetting about our pork, which is still in the oven. But what we're going to do is we're going to do this. And just kind of reheat the bacon. And shallots. And now everything's cooking on high heat, so remember that. We don't want this to be here for very long, because then we'll burn it. We're just getting some heat back into everything that we put in, the garnish. Go ahead and get this all mixed around. And in my opinion, I know that we've done Brussels sprouts a couple of times on the show before. This is the new way that I do it, and I think it's uh, the better way. So what I'm going to do is just kind of mound these up in the middle of the pan like so and now that we're going to be working on our pan sauce with the pork i'm going to clear that turn it off lit it and just set it on the side so it stays warm all right grab our pork out of the oven Ooh wee that looks good Careful, this pan is probably pretty warm. And by pretty warm, I mean ripping hot. Looks like a pretty good uh, pork tenderloin. Yum, yum. 
Let me do this. I'm going to grab you. Move you real quick. Um, no, let's not use this. Let's use this. So we're going to let our pork rest while we make our pan sauce. So if I flip the pork around, got a nice brown bottom on it, nice brown top on it. We're really just going to set it over here. This is a uh, baking tray that I use to cook bacon on. So pork, pork, we're good. I'm going to set this aside for now. And the pork is just going to rest while we make our pan sauce. So pan sauce, we're going to turn this up to high heat. Be careful with the uh, handle. It is still straight out of the oven, so please don't burn yourself. That'll remind me. That's great. We've got a nice fond on the bottom of the pan, and we're going to go straight into the pan with some chicken stock. I like to put in enough stock so that I have a nice little layer on the bottom of the pan. And then we've got this on a high heat, so this should come up to the boil pretty quick. You don't want too much. Uh, I've got less than a quarter of an inch of total stock on the bottom of the pan. Set that aside. I'm gonna grab a whisk. And you should notice that a lot of that fond is actually gonna come up. And I'm gonna turn this down to medium high. We're gonna put in a tablespoon of horseradish. A tablespoon of Dijon mustard. About a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then we're going to go ahead and mix that all through. The sauce is only going to take about five minutes. At this point, we're just going to kind of let it reduce. We are going to add a little bit of cream to the sauce. So let me grab some heavy cream. I'm going to pour in about two tablespoons. And what we will want to do is get this nice pale kind of yellowy brown color. Perfect, and then the last element to the sauce, we're gonna grab about a tablespoon of butter. And you want cold butter. Once the sauce thickens up a bit, we'll add the butter. It'll add a really nice richness to the sauce. And if you throw warm butter into the sauce, it won't emulsify the same way. I'm using unsalted butter. That way I can control the seasoning later. If you uh, only have salted butter, that's fine. Just uh, make sure you're going a little bit more gentle at the end when you add seasoning to your sauce. Also, since we did salt our pork, there's probably a pretty fair amount of salt in the pan already. Adding salted butter may actually take you over the edge and make it a little bit too salty. That's why a lot of recipes generally call for unsalted uh, versus salted butter, just because you're not adding salt to something that might already have a lot of salt. You'll notice that the bubbles in this are getting a lot thicker. We're just gonna kinda keep it stirred. Our sauce is getting to the point where in the middle here, I can actually create a little bit of an opening. It's got a lovely mustard uh, aroma. And we're going to let that go for just a little bit longer. While we're waiting on that, we can actually start plating our Brussels sprouts. Let's go ahead and set that there. And what I like to do, we're just going to grab our spoon. Let me move this out of the way. 
The problem with doing this as a show is I want to keep things accessible and at the same time out of my way. <laughs> kind of a kind of a little bit of an oxymoron there. We're going to start with our Brussels sprouts. I'm actually going to take a little bit of a clump of uh, garlic, onion, and bacon and start there. Grab one of the lesser done Brussels sprouts and maybe put it round side up. And then I'm going to start plating the other Brussels sprouts around the outside like so with the nice browned exterior on them. And then one on top there. And the reason we're doing this, of course, is because, you know, the better the plate looks, the better the food tastes. And now I'm kind of planning ahead. When I slice my, my uh, pork, I know that I kind of want to set the medallions over on this side. So I'm going to start creating a little bit of a, a pedestal for the pork. Again, with a little bit of bacon, a little bit of Brussels sprout. And basically just kind of creating a little bit of a ramp. And I'm, I'm trying to find the Brussels sprouts that don't have a lot of color on them for this ramp part. Because nobody's going to see them. You'll eat, the, you'll eat through the pork, and then all the Brussels sprouts that you see on the outside will be the ones that are nice and, nice and toasty, like so. And maybe we'll flip one of these over. That way they don't all look the same. Let's see, pork on this side, Brussels on this side. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of crumble some of this bacon and onion over the top. Like so. And keeping an eye on my cream sauce over there, which looks like it's thickening up nicely. We still have it on high heat. And what we're doing is we're essentially just evaporating away some of the moisture, some of the water from the chicken stock. There we go. Nice thick sauce. We're getting it to the point where we can actually draw a line and see the bottom. So we're just going to turn the heat off and toss our butter in. We're going to whisk the butter through. And what this is going to do is emulsify into the cream sauce and give us a nice sheen. Keep whisking, keep whisking until the butter melts. And we've got a nice, thick, delicious pan sauce. The secondary benefit to having a pan sauce is that all that fawn that was burned to the bottom of the pan and sticky and all of that should have mostly come up. So cleaning the pan is actually not going to be uh, that big of a pain. So I'm going to set this aside real quick because the last element to our sauce is actually going to be some chopped chives. And I, I tied these into a bunch so that they didn't take up a whole lot of space. But if you didn't tie yours, that's fine. We're going to go ahead and roughly chop these. Now again, I'm curling my hands and using the flat part of my knuckle as kind of a base or a back plate for my uh, knife, so there's a very low chance of me actually cutting myself, even looking at the camera. These go into the sauce. We'll mix them through. And our pan sauce is done. Get this on the side. We'll move our plate back here to the cutting board. And the last thing we're going to do... Set this up here. Swoop, swoop. Go, clean that off. Grab our pork, move it to the cutting board, and we're going to cut some nice, thick slices here. 
I'm going to cut off just the end here, small end piece, and then I'm going to use that for a tester for me. And then I'm going to cut about three quarter inch to inch thick slices of pork. Like we said, we're going to set the first one there on our ramp that we created. Second one, we'll do like that. Third one, maybe something like this. That looks pretty good. I can actually take this and kind of set it on the top there if I wanted to. And there we go. All we need to do at this point is, where did my spoon go? Nobody knows, I'll grab another one. Take our sauce. And we'll just kind of spoon it over the pork. Now what I want to do is kind of fill up that little white space underneath the pork with some of our sauce. Of course, another way to do this is to transfer the sauce into maybe a uh, measuring cup or something with a spout and then just kind of pour it onto the plate, pour it over the sauce. But here we go. Beautiful pork tenderloin, a nice spicy horseradish sauce. Get half the plate, half the plate, done. Wipe our hands off, and of course we're going to have to go in for the taste here in just a second. But before we do that, I'm going to clean off the little extra bits here. Grab that little burn piece. And there we go. Delicious pork tenderloin with Brussels sprouts. Done. Switch it to this side, and hopefully you all can see what a delicious looking dinner that is. And of course, got to go in for the Instagram photo. So give me two seconds while I get that done, and then I'll let you know how it tastes. Spoiler alert, I'm pretty sure it tastes awesome. There we go. And do a fork and a butter knife in this case, because the pork should be tender enough to cut without a crazy knife. And oh my goodness, it is. Mm-hmm. Good bit of sauce. Mmm. Mm hmm It's nice because the horseradish gives it a little bit of a kick. Not too much of a kick. So it's got that, like, sinuses spiciness. And that's followed up by the cayenne, which gives it the actual heat. Mmm. Delicious sauce. And, of course, the Brussels sprouts are awesome. The great thing about this sauce... This actually goes really well with the Brussels sprouts, too. And so if you're using the Brussels sprouts and eating them with bacon and all of that, bacon and onion, mm. that's an awesome dish. Not too, not too difficult to make, actually. Um, we're really just making pork. We're really just making Brussels sprouts. And then we're just making a quick pan sauce. Looks super impressive. 
one pork tenderloin feeds about two people. You can stretch it to three, um, but if you're gonna do like four or five, get, get two or three pork tenderloins. But you can do them all in one pan, and then you can use all of that great fun that they create to make a super rich sauce. Anyway, everybody, this has been another awesome Cook Along Live for me. Hopefully you guys had some fun watching, uh, look at learning, cooking along, I hope, at some point. Some of you guys should be cooking along with me. Um, if you don't follow me already on Instagram, go take a look there. I always post the ingredients list the week before. So if you do want to hop on one of these and actually cook along with me, um, you'll see everything that you need to get for that week. And uh, like I said, next week will be tortellini. We'll be making uh, tortellini, tortellini with, of ratatouille. So inside we're going to have uh, some nice eggplant, some nice bell peppers, uh, zucchini, onion. Uh, it's just a delicious dish. Definitely on the fancier side. Takes a little bit more work but it's still fun to do. Um, so Instagram, Facebook, if I know you, I'll add you as a friend. Uh, otherwise, I might put a page together at some point, but always on YouTube, these are here. Um, apart from that, let me know what you guys want to do. What, what do you guys want to cook? Tag me in the post that you make if you guys uh, end up making this. And also tag Food Wishes on this. Uh, he's an awesome chef. He uh, is somebody that I learned from a um, long time ago, still always catches videos on a weekly basis. I think he's fantastic. Um, he lives in San Francisco, so right nearby where I am. And um, he's been a huge inspiration. So this is one of his dishes. I hope I did it justice. Chef John, if you're watching, um, thank you so much for the inspiration over the years. Anyway, everybody, hope you guys had a great time watching. I had a great time presenting, and I will see you on the next Cook Along Live. Have a good one. Thank you.